You may wonder, what are DNA SNPs and how do they help us find our ancestors? The acronym SNP stands for Single Nucleotide Polymorphism, and we pronounce this as SNP when talking about DNA. When you take a DNA test, the DNA company examines SNPs in your DNA that are found throughout your chromosomes. The company then compares your DNA to other people's DNA in their database and gives you a list of people who may have many of the same SNPs that you do. People who have a significant number of identical SNPs as you have inherited them from an ancestor that is found in both your family tree and their family tree. And the closer that the ancestor is generation-wise to you both, the more identical SNPs that you and that other person in your DNA match list share. And the amount of DNA that you and a match share is given in centimorgans. And you'll see that on your DNA match list. And the centimorgan is a measurement of the likelihood of DNA to recombine from one generation to the next. So let's break this down into digestible chunks. Single obviously means one. A nucleotide is an, is an important component of DNA. And DNA is an acronym that means deoxyribonucleic acid. I remember the first time that I heard the word polymorphism and I thought it was such a strange word and I wondered if it was even real. Over the years that I've worked in, with DNA and genetic genealogy, I've developed a lot of gratitude for polymorphisms because they enable discoveries about diseases and family connections. A SNP occurs when a nucleotide at a specific location in the chromosome differs between individuals that are being compared. It's basically a known or yet to be discovered variation in a single nucleotide in a genetic sequence. For example, here is a short sequence of DNA. It's a fragment and it has a SNP that's shown here in red in both person one and person two. So in person one, we have a C, which stands for cytosine in the third letter position. And here in person two, the person has an A, which stands for adenine in that third letter location. SNPs are reported in autosomal DNA tests. And these are the types of DNA tests that are done by 23andMe, Ancestry, Family Tree DNA, Living DNA, and MyHeritage. They examine around 600,000 to 700,000 locations um, where in your chromosomes where the SNPs are, occur, are known to occur. XDNA also is, has they also examine the SNPs in xDNA, but it is not as dense or as there are not as many SNPs that are in xDNA that are looked at. Y-DNA tests at family tree DNA use the terminal SNP, which is the end of the line, as a person's haplogroup designation. A fun resource is Snipedia, which is a wiki that has information about alleles or the specific nucleotide variants at those specific lo chromosomal locations. You can look up specific SNPs and learn about the scientific literature that ties both physical traits and diseases to specific or to multiple SNPs. You can look at your raw DNA fi data file and see the names of the SNPs and what the values are that you have at those specific locations. What, and it will be shown in letters in the letters A, T, C, and G. Then you can compare your raw data with the information that you find in Snipedia. So it's kind of a fun extra thing that you can do with your DNA. Everyone has SNPs and we can all be grateful for them because they help us to identify our ancestors. 
As you look at your DNA match list and compare your family tree to that of your DNA matches, hopefully you'll figure out exactly how you're related to your matches. Of course, it isn't always that easy. And in our book, Research Like a Pro with DNA, a genealogist's guide to finding and confirming ancestors with DNA evidence, Diana Elder, Nicole Dyer, and myself explain a process of how to use your DNA results to help you find your ancestors. We also have Research Like a Pro with DNA interactive study groups and an e-course to help you learn more strategies and effective techniques to use DNA in your family history research. Go on over to familylocket.com to, to learn more.